Now we've been considering a single torus here. One of the wonderful things about a torus is that it's open at the center. And being open at the center, it can connect with the entire universe. And that means another torus can be right here beside it. And center to center, there is no problem torus to torus to connect. So uh, you and I, center to center, very distinct, different beings, but center to center through consciousness, we intimately can connect. And that's the same, we can connect with the entire uh, universe. The human heart is now documented as the strongest generator of both electrical and magnetic fields in the body. Now this is important because we've always been taught that the brain is where the action is. The brain has an electrical field that does have a magnetic field, but they're relatively weak compared to the heart. The heart is about 100 times stronger electrically and up to 5,000 times stronger, 5,000 times stronger magnetically than the brain. And the reason this is important is because the physical world as we know it is made of those two fields of energy, electrical and magnetic fields of energy, electromagnetic fields. Our own physics books now tell us if we can change either the magnetic field of an atom or the electrical field of the atom, by doing that we change, we literally change that atom, we change the stuff that our bodies in this world are made of. And it appears now that the human heart is designed to do both, to change both the electrical field and the magnetic field of our bodies and our world, and they do so in response to the emotions that we create uh, between our heart and our brain. These toroidal dynamics are visible at various scales. One of them is at the galactic level, which are huge spinning structures with billions of stars in it. Looks like typically big arms of galaxies spinning around and they have vortices that goes from the center out to the edge of the galactic halo that surrounds them. Stars move from this galactic disk out to the halo, down the vortices, and back out again. Stars like Arcturus, for instance, we know, have done that path already. That's the appropriate description even for the atmosphere of our planet. The weather goes from the North Pole down to the equator and then back up, from the South Pole up to the equator and then back down. Even the dynamics on the surface of the Sun are very similar. Of course, here we're looking at it from an external perspective on a small scale model. When you look at the solar system, embedded in the galaxy, embedded in the cluster, embedded in the supercluster. We're traveling in this boundless sea of infinite Taurus flow. 